My name is Farshad Kayud. I have been studying the ping test here, which is a way to verify precious metals as authentic or counterfeit uh, using sound. We're currently developing an application and I came across a question and today we're gonna see what happens when we try to answer that. This is a fake one just so you guys can see what's going on here. I put the fake buffalo in the pinger here and then hit start on the app. And I'm just tapping the coin and right now, the app is only listening for key frequencies. And you can see that it didn't hear any of the key frequencies, so it gives it a zero out of five. This does not pass the ping There's test. a real one here. And this is an authentic silver buffalo that was actually used in the aggregation or used to set these frequencies. So it's definitely gonna match. Put it in the pinger here and then hit start and then tap it. And you can see that all five of the five peaks were heard. And right now we're only listening for, for peaks. So the slope and the ping time is turned off. Normally we'd be listening for that. Uh, but right now we're just looking for peaks for, for this test. For this the reason we want to know what happens when we drill a hole in the center of it is because when I bounce it on my fingertip here, and then I hit start, notice how there's five there now. Now there's only three. Now there's different vibration modes happening here. And there, this frequency right here and this frequency right here are actually vibrating right in the center of the coin and it's dampened by my fingertip. So let me tap it again. So I'm curious, what happens if we drill a hole right in the center of that coin where those two frequencies go? So put it back in the finger here. You can see again, all five. So the reason it's doing that is because these aren't dampening the coin enough to dampen those two vibration modes. So today, we're gonna see what happens when we drill a hole. So I don't have the most scientific setup here. I have a Dremel and I only have one drill bit that fits in there. So we're gonna to have to go with that. Let me put this aside here. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna hold this in there, but we're gonna drill a hole in the center of this coin and then retest it to see what happens. So let's go ahead and do that. Get this to a safe spot and uh, let me mark this coin up and then I'll be right back. Finding the center point of this wasn't as easy as it sounded. I ended up just um, getting the calipers. I took the maximum diameter, divided it by two, and then just went around the coin. And it's kind of it eyeballed it, and then went around the coin, and that's about right. Okay, I'm actually going to try and hold this. I'm not sure if this is a. This is probably not the best way to do this. It's probably not a good idea. I have on eye protection. All right, let's go, baby. I'm literally hiding behind the, the cell phone here, just in case it. The bit breaks and flies into my face or something. I think we're through. This thing is hot, even with the gloves. Whew. Yeah, we went through. I'm gonna try and ping it on the fingertip first here. That was kind of unexpected. Okay, so it looks like those three still hit. So the center of the coin didn't really affect the outer edges there or, or whatever. The center of the coin didn't really affect the vibration modes that are happening outside of the center, which is really, really interesting. Okay, here we go. We're going to put the coin with the hole in the center of it before it matched all of them perfectly we're gonna ping it we're gonna put it right over the hole here and then we're gonna start the test and tap it and now you can see that that peak right there is no longer matching and it's getting us a four out of five so it's to the left of that there which is interesting because that hole is drilled right in the center of the coin or right off center where this is supposed to be. I gotta think about this and we need to drill a bigger hole for sure.